did you know hmm. that because of all the nuclear tests we have done, the bombs we exploded in the 1940s, 50s and 60s, hmm. all the steel produced in the world after that hmm. is contaminated by nuclear radiation. No, and I didn't as know that. a result of this, huh. all steel in the world is divided into two types of steel. Pre-1945 steel, which is called non-contaminated steel, and post-1945 steel, which is contaminated steel. And today's episode, we will talk about what this has to do with sunken battleships and the search for dark matter in the universe. How do you manage to find topics that are so wide and apart from each other? Like sunken battleships, dark matter. What connection? This is called the principle of maximum surprise. Okay. Oh. So, I work, maybe hard, I work hard on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, so uh, what happened when the nuclear bomb was invented, hmm. uh, US, Russia hmm. and a whole bunch of other countries got into an arms race to build a lot of nuclear bombs. Hmm. And as part of building better and bigger and more fancy bombs, hmm. they had to test the bombs. Right. To test the bombs, they would Explore them. Explore the bombs. As a side effect, of course, we all know this, right? Mm. That uh, uh, radiation is let out into the atmosphere and it spreads. Yep. I mean, it happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It happened in Chernobyl, uh, where some of the radiation is still there. Mm. And like monster pigs exist in those forests now. Um, uh, all kinds of stuff, right? Watch the series. Watch the series. It's fun. Well, not fun, fun, but... <laughs> but as a result, uh, one of the things that happened hmm. was a radioactive uh, variation of cobalt called cobalt 60 hmm. uh, as opposed to cobalt 59 which is the normal cobalt. Hmm. Right? Radioactive cobalt got, was dispersed into the atmosphere. Exactly, was dispersed in the atmosphere hmm. and now cobalt 60 was there everywhere all over the world. Okay, okay. Now, when... Uh, you make steel, hmm. right? What is steel? Steel is basically iron with a small amount of contamination of carbon dioxide in it. Right. right. Uh, so to make steel, you have to pass atmospheric carbon dioxide over the iron. Hmm. And the problem is that this carbon dioxide contamination has a contamination of its own, yeah. uh, which is the cobalt-60. Hmm. And so now all steel that is created uh, contains a small amount of cobalt-60. Okay. All right. Okay. Why does this matter? I was about to ask you that. So, yeah. big deal. There is a bit of cobalt-60 in our uh, stainless steel. How yeah. does that yeah. affect anything? So, uh, when you have to make sensitive instruments that uh, need to measure uh, radiation, huh. oh. and if those instruments contain steel, hmm. Then the cobalt-60 in the steel interferes with the measurement. Can Ooh. you tell me hmm. why do I have instruments to measure radiation? Geiger counter, I mean if I'm going to Chernobyl, I need to know exactly what amount of radiation I'm going to take. Akash, when was the last time you went to Chernobyl and did you carry a Geiger counter with you? Are yesterday we went to Chernobyl. So why did you forget why? man? <clears throat> Nobody is going to Chernobyl. Okay, Geiger counter is like a lab thing. Tell me something yeah. more. Uh, uh, I honestly don't know. Where would we want to measure radiation? Medical devices, right? You want to see if somebody has been exposed to radiation hmm. and whether they need uh, medication. But uh, another one hmm. is that when you are building big astronomic radio telescopes True. and you are measuring uh, the particles that are being sent across the universe. Yeah. Right? So cosmic rays are coming in and they're coming from very far away, which means that the number of particles that reach the earth is really, really tiny. It is. And the instruments we build to measure those, right, are insanely sensitive. Yeah. And they are the ones used to measure dark matter, hmm. except that this insanely sensitive instrument keeps getting bombarded by cobalt-60 uh, in the instrument itself. To build these sensitive instruments, hmm. what you need hmm. is steel which doesn't have this cobalt-60, hmm. non-contaminated steel, hmm. so that you house this instrument uh, 
in a safe chamber like this and there is no interference correct but now we figured out the dark matter and looking into space and all of that where do sunken battleships come into the picture okay so where do you get non contaminated steel oh right yeah go because on because what has happened hmm. is that all the battleships before world war 2 hmm. right hmm. they contained a lot of steel yeah right and they sunk and they are below under water and they are protected from everything and they are clean steel without any cobalt 60 in them non contaminated steel right hmm. so to build our uh, our instruments sensitive instruments hmm. you have to go diving to the bottom of the ocean and bring up these pieces of steel uh, for all your non contaminated steel needs what a fascinating thought to look into the sky we have to dive deep into the earth first yes very philosophical <laughs> thought but uh, it's an interesting uh, thing how one event or one invention or one discovery whichever you want to mm-hmm. call it has changed the world in so many ways has changed the way we approach things in so many ways just radioactivity impacting day to day life in this manner is something that you don't really think about well, one event can change everything right one invention so hmm. the text generation ais that are being invented these days gpt3 and chat gpt they are going to contaminate all our text Ooh, right yeah. after 2022 yeah. all the text in the world is going to be divided into pre 2022 text which was written by humans yeah and post 2022 text which nobody knows which parts are written by humans and which parts are written by chat gpt this so it's just the same concept this came from uh, twitter user tube light okay. yeah this by the way is pre 2022 completely written and formulated by humans there was no ai used in in forming any of these sentences yes, these yes. are time stamp c 2022 <laughs> we'll put a time stamp yeah there you go yeah mm, yeah. Right. yeah all right but that brings up other interesting questions like uh, has radioactivity impacted anything else or just the steel radioactivity of course impacts anything huh, when it is at a large dose huh. but this this tiny dose of radioactivity huh. it even impacts photographic plates right? oh yeah so when uh, nuclear bombs were tested huh. Kodak used to find out first because <laughs> <laughs> their photographic plates would get uh, damaged, and uh, then later on, I think the governments uh, started secretly informing them beforehand because I think Kodak tried to sue us or something like that. <laughs> we'll we'll actually look that up and put that uh, in the description in the show yes. notes for you to check out. Yes. But yeah. You- <laughs> <laughs> This is fascinating. Does this mean that the steel we use on a day-to-day life is radioactive? Well, yes, but not in the way you think, right? Okay. I mean, one of the reactions a lot of people have when I tell them this story huh. uh, is that, oh my God! So now all the steel is contaminated, <laughs> and I am eating it, and I am going to get cancer. And no, yeah. the amount of radioactive stuff. uh in the steel is so low huh. that it doesn't make any difference to us on a day to day life it only affects these extremely extra extra sensitive instruments hmm. uh, nothing else so that's not something to worry about so navin has actually done a thread on twitter on this topic and uh, we'll put a link to that in the show notes and description do check that out and in that thread in fact there are multiple amazing comments and multiple questions that have come up some of which we will try to address now and uh, in fact uh, we are creating a whatsapp group in which we will be collecting these questions like these on topics that we are going to make videos on so if you want to be a part of that whatsapp group we'll tell you how to do that at the end of this video i just wanted to put it out there but the point i'm trying to uh, bring forth is in in the thread that navin has made this user called cool one that's the handle at cool one has uh, had the best take on the topic he says or, or she or whoever it is they say that uh, my stainless steel is now stained with nuclear explosions and i love the pun so well done cool one um, another interesting tweet is a question from uh, this person called pradeep and uh, this is what we are offering uh, people in the whatsapp group that if you join the whatsapp group you will be able to ask questions in advance which we will then tackle in the video like we are doing in this video with the uh, question from the twitter thread that navin has already posted that's not the whatsapp group so pradeep asks 
are we all breathing radioactive cobalt 60 and if yes then how harmful is it to us okay so same answer as the steel spoons mm. which is yes we are breathing radioactive cobalt 60 mm. but the quantities are small enough that it doesn't cause problems in fact mm. there is a lot of radioactive uh, elements in the air that we breathe mm. the most important one being uh, carbon 14 and uh, that again uh, the cosmic rays that are hitting Earth are continuously converting our regular carbon into radioactive carbon mm. and we keep uh, breathing that in and it goes into our bones and our blood and our brain and everywhere and uh, that is the carbon that ends up being used in carbon dating by the way. So many many million years from now if somebody finds your bones they will know exactly what year you were living in. Yes. Well not exactly the year but around the period. Right. Uh, Mukund has a question. Mukund yeah. says uh, steel is not smelted only in places where these nuclear tests have happened. It is smelted globally. So is that steel still um, uh, contaminated? Yes. What happened was that the cobalt-60 hmm. uh, dispersed in the atmosphere hmm. and in a small, short amount of time it pretty much went all over the world. So it's pretty much... Uh, it's there everywhere now. And that Not is also the reason why we should avoid a nuclear war because even if the nuclear part of the war happens only in one place, mm -hmm. hey, the world, mm -hmm. air currents, atmosphere. Yeah. Vishesh has uh, uh, comments. He's, uh, he says uh, it reminds him of the Juarez nuclear spill case. Yes, again, we, it's very important that none of this should be confused with the deadly nuclear spills, bad radiation, okay. Fukushima and so on, right? This is tiny trace amounts which is not dangerous. Okay. Vishesh, that's a Vishesh tippani for you. Yeah. <laughs> Lalit, Lalit asks, how can you use pre-1945 steel without exposing it to the current uh, contaminated air at contaminated yeah. atmosphere? So, the important thing to realize is that just steel sitting in the atmosphere doesn't absorb cobalt-60, right? Mm. The reason why all our steel has the cobalt-60 in it mm. is that when the steel is being made, carbon dioxide is being passed through it and that carbon dioxide is being uh, uh, absorbed uh, by the steel and as part of that, uh, it grabs some cobalt-60 also. But once the steel is made, it is no longer, you know, changing hmm. you have questions put them in the comments of the video or if you're listening to this on podcast send it to us uh, via tweets Naveen's uh, Twitter handle will be in the show notes in the description of this particular uh, session uh, Zubin has a question or rather a comment same thing with wine and painting pigments that is a very interesting comment just like all the steel in the world is contaminated hmm. similarly uh, all the wine in the world and all the paints, paintings in the world mm. are also uh, contaminated with uh, trace elements of other radioactive material. Okay. And as a result, um, this is actually used to check for forgeries. Okay. If, uh, I mean, there have been cases where a wine which was claimed to be really, really old uh, was found to be newer because it contained uh, post-1945 uh, uh, radiation uh, I mean uh, results of radiation similarly there are I mean you might have seen uh, episodes uh, on TV of crime dramas where uh, painting uh, turns out to be a forgery because by analyzing the paint you see that it contains uh, paints with radiation in them yeah and you can also see episodes where the forger actually tried to cover up for that fact I think there is a white collar episode I'll look it up and put it in the description later for uh, you to check out in the show notes for you to check out. But, uh, oh, there is one more question. Uh, how do they detect dark matter using steel? Which I think we've covered in the episode, but let's well, round Actually, it so just to be clear, they're not detecting the dark matter using steel. Hmm. They're detecting it using sensitive scientific equipment. But the rest of the equipment has steel in it, which interferes. So the steel is needed the non-contaminated steel is just needed to build the rest of that instrument hmm. uh, without interfering with the uh, sensitive sensors. Right. And you have questions, you can put them in the comments or send us a tweet, send a tweet to Naveen. But here is a question for you and for Naveen as well. Hmm. Are there any estimates of 
how close we are to completely using up all of this pre 1945 steel actually i don't know the answer to that so if any of you know the answer please post them in the comments or tweet it at us and we would love to update the episode with that thank you yeah and we will keep updating it every time we get a fresh estimate of yes. whatever quantity there is no we are not going to do that <laughs> this is rikant that's navin this is future iq thank you thank you for watching till the end if you like this episode check out these others you might like them also and please share with your friends i'm sure they will also like these thank you